Hello, welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. I'm your host, Dr. James J.C. Cooley, and I hope we all enjoying this new year, 2023. And I got a very, 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 very good friend of mine. You know, one of my most favorite people in, in the world is going to talk to us today about reset versus resolution. I mean, a lot of times we get caught up uh, and, and our mindset is uh, New Year's resolution, uh, that, and this. Many times we said at the beginning of the New Year, first day, and we forget about uh, everything that we said we were going to do. Uh, this young lady right here is going to uh, just talk to us about a lot of different things. And uh, I'm looking forward to having on. But before I bring on, I, I have to say uh, hello and welcome to my Zach producer and co-host, uh, Dr. Michelle Denise Cooley. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm, doing I'm, so, excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this. Is it me or do I hear an echo? Um, I'm really excited about the show today. My favorite guest on the show um paula shaw and she's like an honorary guest on the james Cooley show it's your life so we just love having her here and we love having her here in the beginning of the year and you're right james reset instead of resolutions because you know i think resolutions making them is kind of like a fad to me but that's just my opinion what are your thoughts well i mean yeah you, you're right i mean so a lot of times we say we just like i mentioned uh, we got these uh, New Year's resolutions that we're going to do. I think uh, Paula got it right. And, and, you know, Michelle going to introduce our, our fantastic guest shortly. Uh, got it right that we probably need to do a reset. A reset, a reset sometimes meaning getting rid of everything that you did last year uh, that did not uh, turn out the right way or that you did not uh, uh, keep your promises on things. So I'm excited to hear uh, a lot of things that... Uh, that she's gonna talk to us about. And I tell you what, Michelle, uh, I can't wait. Uh, let's uh, introduce this uh, fantastic guest. And wherever you're watching the show at or listening to the show, if you wanna be part of the conversation, all you have to do is go to the comments, ask Paula any questions that you want to, or ask myself or Michelle any questions that you want to. I promise we'll get you an answer. Uh, Michelle, introduce the title of the show, the purpose of the show, and this absolutely fantastic guest. Oh, most definitely. So the title of the show is What About a Reset Instead of a Resolution? And the purpose of this show is getting to know life transitions coach and grief specialist, best-selling author, keynote speaker, and media host Paula Shaw. And we're going to talk about how reset works more successfully than a resolution and how New Year's resolutions are filled with self-sabotage and how resolutions tend to focus on negativity and prior screw-ups and how resets or course corrections, I love that, accept our humanity and imperfection. So let me tell you a little bit about this host, I mean, this guest today, Paula Shaw, again, life transitions coach, grief specialist, best-selling author, keynote speaker, media host on her own show, Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. For more than 25 years, she's been dedicated to helping people navigate the stress of change and challenge using mind, body, tools, and techniques. She's a founding member of the Association for Comprehensive Energy Psychology. Paula has degrees in education and communications from Long Beach State University, as well as graduate counseling credentials in grief and addictive disorders from Loyola Marymount University. She's authored several books, including Chakras, The Magnificent Seven, Grief, When Will This Pain Ever End? And her latest book, Saying the Right Thing When You Don't Know What to Say. The James Cooley Show welcomes back our honorary guest, Miss Paula Shaw. Well, you know, Paula, yeah, welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show. And, uh, Thank you. I, I, I always have to remind our, our viewers and our listeners uh, that uh, it was you that gave me my first opportunity in radio and led to television and, and et cetera. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, well, so. Uh, you hey, Paula. Very uh, welcome. <laughs> Lord knows you took the ball and ran, didn't you? <laughs> well, I, 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 I tried, you know. <laughs> But for our listeners and our viewers that uh, probably hadn't uh, watched you on the show before, can we catch them up a little bit, tell them uh, a little bit about you, where you're from, and, and just some of the great things that you're doing? 
Ooh, okay. Um, I'm from San Diego now. I did grow up in Southern California, though I was born in New York City. Um, I have been working since 91 as a life transitions counselor and coach and helping people specifically with grief issues or any kind of life transitions that tend to cause us problems. Because you know we humans, James, we like the comfort of the familiar. And so very often I have to help people deal with whatever upheaval life has brought them, whether it's through a death or a move or a job change or some kind of loss. And Lord knows that since the pandemic, we've all been dealing with a lot of loss. So that has kept me very busy helping people deal with the challenges those losses bring. Wow. You know, and yes, I mean, with, uh, they're always good and bad and, 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 and the year and, and also in people's lives. And, and uh, we have to be able to cope with both the good and the bad. Yes. And therefore, we need someone like you uh, <laughs> to always uh, get us back when we start leaning in the wrong direction, get us back focused that you're still here, you still got a life to live, you still got to bring joy and happiness to others. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and a lot of people, they talk on New Year's, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, all of these things that they're going to do. I got to ask you this question, Paula. <laughs> what did you do on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day? Oh, my goodness. Well, New Year's Eve, I joined some friends to have a nice dinner and listen to some fun music. But, you know, my favorite thing to do and what I did come home and do, I didn't stay out until midnight. I like to do a little survey of the year on New Year's Eve. You know, look at like three things I feel proud of accomplishing three things I've forgiven, three things that I wish I hadn't done. You know, there's a, a whole list I go through. And then I look at what are some goals I have for the new year? What would I like to accomplish? Um, you know, what do I just wish for, wish that might happen magically in the new year? So it feels like a little bit of a clean out the old, welcome in the new. And I think it's wonderful to do that at this time of year for a lot of reasons. For one thing, lots of people are doing that. And so there's an energy field that we step into when we join that and it's powerful. And so that's pretty exciting. You know, where in the whole world, people are considering New Year's Day a fresh start, a new day. And I think it's very powerful to use that time to let go of what's already done, already gone, and you now can do nothing about, probably, um, and decide that you love yourself enough that you want to make room for those wishes and those dreams and those goals for the next year to come through. You know, so Paula, what does Paula Shaw look forward to uh, this year? Because it's already started and uh, I know you already set goals and you already set things. What are some of the most significant things that you want to achieve this year? Ooh, that's a big question. Well, the most important thing, of course, is happy family. You know, I'm, I'm in the process now of helping my mom and dad with doctor appointments and that kind of thing, because my mom's 93 and my dad just turned 97. So that's an important goal for me to be of service to them. And then, of course, being a good mom to my son, Casey, and my daughter, Erin, who are grown up and, you know, don't need me to be mommy to, on a daily basis caring for them but they need me to be mom and be there for them. So that's the top priorities. But then I'm really excited this year about growing my show, Change It Up Radio, because I feel like we've been 
bringing a lot of great information to people and I want more people to be exposed to it. I'm more, I'm really excited this year about growing my work as a grief specialist because there's a lot of pain out there that isn't necessarily being addressed for people in ways that are practical and that they need. And, um, you know, JC, I wouldn't mind finding a sweetheart this year either. <laughs> you know, all of those are absolutely fantastic. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say resolution, but, uh, you know, the reset and so this is just what I want to do. And I, all of them, all of them are very, 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 very achievable. <laughs> yeah. you know, yes. So, <laughs> so, Paula, why do many people make uh, New Year re resolutions um, on New Year's Eve as you know things are coming? And, and what is the problem with the resolutions? I'm so glad you asked me that, JC, because I have a passion about this. So, first of all. A resolution, and another name for it can be a planned disappointment because the resolution is steeped in a lot of things that don't work for the human brain. So let's begin with the fact that a resolution implies that somehow you were less than or you screwed up last year. So now you've got to try to do it better. And the brain, first of all, does not like to be wrong. And it doesn't like to be, um, what's the word I want? Like judged, criticized, harangued. The brain likes to feel like it's doing its job well because its job really is to help you survive. So just walking into the word resolution is the implication, wow, you blew it last year. You better try to do it differently this year so maybe you won't screw up again. So you see right there how that sets you up for this negative situation. Now, if you want me to talk a little bit about a reset and how that's better, I'm happy to do that. Are you ready to hear that part, JC? I tell you, I tell you what, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a station break. Okay. And and then when we come back, we talk we're gonna talk about reset and resolutions and why people make these resolutions on New Year's and not during the whole year. But let's talk about that once we get back for the break. And if you want to be part of this conversation, all you have to do is go to the comments, ask this great guest any question you want to, and uh, I promise you we'll get you an answer. It's your life. I'm Dr. James J. C. Cooley. We'll be back shortly after the break. <laughs> Commit with what? Commit with what? 
in everything that you do. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. And that's like I said, I got this absolutely fantastic uh, guest of mine that has been on the show uh, several, several different times. I've been on her show a few times. It's always a pleasure having her on the show because she brings so much great wisdom and knowledge. And uh, and sometimes I, I believe if, if we open up our ears and listen uh, we would pick up some of these great uh, uh, words of wisdom and knowledge and understanding that uh, she is putting out. So if you want to be part of the conversation, just like I said, uh, you can. Just go to the comments and ask any question you want. Paul, I want to pick back up where we where we left off at because mm -hmm. uh, the title of the show is Reset Instead of Resolution. First of all, can you tell our viewers and our listeners, why you chose that title and what's the significance of it? Oh, because I truly believe both from my personal experience and all the years I've been dealing with other people that the reset is the successful uh, answer to trying to create change in the new year. Now, let's let's think about what we were just saying. A resolution is loaded with guilt, right? Guilt is a very low vibration energy, not a good place to want to build something new. It's it's loaded with the wrongdoing, you know, where you went wrong last year. It's not just picking a, 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 a new target point, a new goal, a new focal point, and heading toward it. A reset is more that. A reset is based on positivity. It's kind of based on, I've got a better idea now. I've got an idea of a better way to do, whether it's your weight, your food, your eating, your exercise, your work practices, whatever it is you want to change. And remember, change is a much more accessible word to the brain than alter or correct, you know, because if you say, I'm going to correct this, it really pretty much sounds like mm, you weren't doing it right before. And we all know that positive words and positive energy are a much higher vibration and higher vibrations take us more in alignment with what we want to create because probably what we want to create is a high vibration. So if we're down here with some kind of low vibration verbiage, like, oh, I screwed up or, oh God, I blew it and you know, all those things then you see there's no match. So we want our words to match our goals and then we can create positive change. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love that analogy. You know, Paul, so why, why do you think that uh, uh, many of us, uh, we we wait to the end of the year yeah. to uh, say, well, this is what I'm gonna do different than this this year and uh find out uh just like what you just said when you can't achieve those things uh the sense of fear yourself time mm -hmm. uh seeking why why do they, we wait to the to the end of the year opposed to doing it all year long <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question and you know i was initially saying how resolutions are kind of nicknamed as planned disappointments you know what we're human and one of the things I like about reset is, again, it doesn't apply wrongdoing. 
it 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 doesn't imply that you you just did it so wrong. What it, a reset just allows you to go, hmm, hmm. I wonder if there's a better way. So let's use the example of you're trying to lose weight. Well, in a resolution, we tend to make grandiose statements, right? Like, I'm losing 50 pounds this year and I'm working out five days a week. Well, first of all, that's a very big goal and probably a radical change. Humans don't like change. We like the comfort of the familiar. So if we try to change too radically or take ourselves to this place that's so far in contrast with where we were, the brain is not going to feel safe and it's going to rebel. And when we try to do that kind of thing, we put the amygdala, which is the part of your brain that prepares you for fight, flight, or freeze. We put that amygdala on high alert because suddenly we're not feeling safe. And remember, the, the amygdala is all about your survival. And what the brain will then do is drag you back to where you were, cause the cravings that you don't know where they came from or cause the tiredness, I can't work out today, cause whatever so that you'll go back to where you were because at least we know you were surviving in that place. And remember, the brain doesn't care if you're happy. All the brain cares about is that you survive. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's deep. You know, so Paul, uh, uh, you mentioned the reset and resolution. Mm -hmm. Do you believe it's a lack of willpower that causes most um, things to feel, especially revolution, resolutions? Or is it just that when, just like you said, when we said something, we just over say what we're going to do like for 50 pounds that is a right. tall order uh so uh, uh what are your thoughts on that is it you know james the analogy that comes to me my dad is a veteran of the normandy invasion and he's told the story many times that when they were trying to land on the beach, there was barbed wire in the water and the guns were shooting. And so guys started going over the side of the landing craft, jumping into the water, but they had these heavy packs on their backs. And so instead of being able to swim or make it to the shore, they went under and they drowned. That's an analogy, I think, that compares to a huge resolution, trying to bring about a huge change that w may even be frightening. You know, it may even, like I said, trigger the brain to fear that you won't survive. And so I think what's a more sensible idea, A, Let's make those goals attainable. There's nothing wrong with starting small and building. So if you want to lose 50 pounds, what's wrong with this winter? I'm going to lose 10 pounds. You've got the rest of the year to lose the other 40 if that's your dream. But you can succeed at that 10 pounds. Now you've got the good feelings, the self-love, the high vibration to carry you into losing the other 40 pounds. You know what I'm saying? You're not failing right off the bat. And then what do people do when they fail right off the bat? They go, oh, screw it. It's too hard. I don't care. And then they don't do anything. Wow. You know, so you, you mentioned um, uh, change, uh, which is uh, many don't know that change is inevitable. It's going to happen. Right. And, and, and a lot of times, uh, just like you said, we are caught up in uh, I'm never going to change. I'm never going to do this and I'm never going to do that. And we find ourselves left back in the past and everything else is moving forward. Mm -hmm. You know, so. What what would uh, be advice to you, uh, to our viewers and our listeners that uh, might be thinking that way right now? What would what would Paula Shaw tell them? You know what, James? When I was listening to 
what you uh, showed our listeners and viewers at the break, one of the statements you made in your speech to the, the high school kids was, you have to love yourself. And I truly believe that's the core of everything. If we make our changes, because I love myself so much, I just want it to be even better. You know, I'm not a screw up. I'm I'm a perfectly designed being. God gave me life, so I must be okay. And so I deserve to love myself. And if I love myself, I want my I want me to have the best experience in life possible. And if you come from that place, see how that's a much more high vibration thought rather than, God, I never do anything right. Oh, I blew it again. I just can't seem to stop eating carbs. I just can't seem to get to the gym every day. That kind of self-talk is not loving. You know, you, you wouldn't sit your friend down and say, you keep eating carbs and you don't get to the gym every day and you said you were going to. You wouldn't do that. But boy, do we do it to ourselves all the time. So when I say change it up, which is the title of my show, I'm saying change it up. Let's try a little self-love this year because you've probably done the self-criticism a lot in the past and we know that hasn't worked. So let's change it up. Go for self-love. Love yourself so much that you know without a doubt you deserve the best and you're going to have it. Paula, I love your show. I've been watching it, and uh, you know, it's like I said, I've been part of some of some of uh, uh, being on your on your show a few times. And you're right. You know, once uh, a person realized that, you know, first of all, you got to get an opportunity to know yourself, know who you are, know the good, mm-hmm. the bad, and the endeavors. I mean, uh, good, bad, endeavors. But you have to be honest with yourself. Yes. And once you once you are honest with yourself, you have to accept. Who you are, you know. So mm-hmm. know yourself, accept yourself. Then you have to love who you are. Love who you are. Yes. You know. So know yourself, accept yourself, love yourself before you share yourself. Mm-hmm. And and uh, if that. we if we did that, uh, especially when it comes to self love, I think everything else would be a little easier uh to digest but i tell you paul we gotta take a station break but we're gonna come back and we we're gonna pick it up and we're gonna talk more and if you want to be part of it go to the comments we'll be back shortly after break it's your life i'm dr james jc cooley and communities and we encourage everyone to dream big think big and be big at everything you do and the way that you do that is first of all you got to believe in yourself you have to believe in yourself you have to know that you are here for a purpose you also have to be able to step out your comfort zone and do things that you that you probably didn't think that you can do
Hello, welcome back to It's Your Life. Uh, uh, I'm Dr. James J.C. Cooley, and I'm just sitting back, always having fun, uh, especially when I'm in the, the presence of this young lady right here. And I'm <laughs> just so happy to call her friend. And you see how incredible she is with the information that's, uh, that she is putting out. And uh, so uh, I tell you, uh, if you ever need to, uh, help or therapy or, or whatever. Hey, Paula, can, can you tell them how, I think you give them a 30 minute free session or something like that. I, I, I do know. give a 20 minute complimentary yeah. consult and you can book that on paulashaw.com. Um, that can be on zoom. If you prefer to be face to face, it can be on the phone, um, FaceTime, whatever works for you. Oh yeah. yeah. So Paul, I want to get back on the reset, uh, versus, uh, uh, yeah. resolution. What happens in the brain? I'm talking about most human brains when they have to make a decision on and try to comprehend uh, the difference between reset and resolution. Uh, what some of the thoughts that I, mean, I know you deal with patients all the time that uh, you have to convince them that <laughs> you, you have to be open minded. And <laughs> sometimes it requires a different mindset. Right. <laughs> uh, can you explain that to our, our viewers? Well, you know, we've pro we've all heard that um, saying, like, you know, make it bite-sized chunks. You know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And I think the problem is people tend to think they can eat the whole elephant in one bite, and then everything's going to magically be wonderful. And so what I really love to see people do rather than a bunch of resolutions that probably will turn into disappointments, have a general plan for the year. Like you want to have some dreams. You want to have some goals. We began today with JC asking me, what are your dreams and goals for the new year? It's great to have those, but don't be really rigid and extreme about them because how can we know on January 1, what it's going to be like navigating the balance between effort, surrender, dedication, and flexibility. All of those words, all of those experiences are going to come into play in the new year. And it's a fine tuned balance. We have to know when to effort. But there are times when efforting just wipes us out, just drains us, and then it's time to surrender. We have to be dedicated. We have to know what we want, but we also have to be flexible or we make ourselves crazy. And we cannot possibly know on January 1 what 365 days are going to look like when it comes to balancing those four conditions. And so I love the idea of a general plan. It's sort of like if you and I jumped in a boat tomorrow, JC, and we left the California shore and knew we wanted to get to Hawaii, we'd need a plan. We'd need a course. But if somewhere along the way, the water got weird or things got choppy, we might have to correct that course reset that course so that we can get to Hawaii more smoothly. And that's how I like to think of this, you know, have a plan, but always be open to course correction, to adjustment, to resetting that plan when that's the appropriate thing to do that will fall into our goals of loving ourselves being joyful and happy and balanced. Huge thing, balance. Wow. You know, so Apollo, so what is the, the roles of uh, accepting, accepting yourself mm -hmm. uh, uh, and self-love uh, as it relates to reset? Oh, well, I think reset is a much gentler way of creating change, you know? As I said before, resolution implies I don't accept myself. I don't accept what I did. I'm guilting myself. I'm saying I screwed up. 
And, and now I've got to do it better. Now I got to, and probably punish myself along the way because we're very good at doing that too. So reset, I think, is a more gentler, a more gentle, kinder, more loving way of creating change. It's not as radical as what we were talking about earlier, like demanding of myself, I lose 50 pounds and go to the gym five days a week when I have not been doing that at all. So reset implies, okay, I've got a better idea now. And since I want the best for myself because I love myself, let's implement the better idea. And once that better idea is clear, implement it as quickly as possible and then stay in the present moment. Here's where I think a lot of people sabotage themselves, JC. They get too far out into the future. In fact, just yesterday, I was sitting with a woman who lost her husband earlier this week. And one of the things I cautioned her is, don't, don't get out of your 24 hours. Right now, you need to take life a moment at a time because first of all, life only happens to us a day at a time, a moment at a time. And if we take on too many tomorrows, we get anxious, we get scared, we get depressed. So for any of us, whether we're dealing with grief, we're dealing with a reset, dealing with a job change or a new goal, stay in the present. Take it one day at a time because that's how we humans are designed. Otherwise, we go into overload and overwhelm, and that's not a good place from which to create. Wow, and, and you're right. Uh, we, we, we must stay in the presence uh, mm -hmm. on, on, and not just dwell on the past. Right. Um, because uh, we are still here, we still got loved ones, and, and as long as we're making a difference, but in order to do that, your mindset have to be present. Mm -hmm. You know, so 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 Paula, we talk about um uh, oh why is just like oh you and I just talked a few minutes ago about know yourself, love yourself, accept yourself before you love yourself. Yeah. Uh but I'm I'm still trying to figure out how can we get uh people to actually lock into that 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 concept self love. You know, mm. just self-love. And why is it so difficult for many of us human beings uh, to adjust to that concept? You know, JC, that's such a great question. And I really think it goes back to the our youngest days. You know, especially people in our age range, I think parents today are more conscious about trying not to use a lot of negative words with their children. But when I was a child, you were reprimanded with things like, shame on you, bad girl, bad girl. And so what we learned from that is how to criticize and judge ourselves and make ourselves wrong. We're so much better at that than we are at going, ooh, wow, I like the way I did that today. Hey, my hair's working. Ooh, I look pretty cool. We don't do that. How many people walk up to the mirror in the morning and go, all right, Paula, looking good. <laughs> you know, but we might go, oh, shoot, I got to twi tweeze my brows or, oh, God, my hair is just not working. We do that so much more easily. And it becomes part of our conversation. It's so much easier to sit down with your girlfriend and go, oh, I'm just going crazy that I can't lose this five pounds much more easy to do that than it is to go, I'm feeling so good about the fact that I am showing up at the gym every day and I've gotten these five pounds gone. That feels a little, you know, from our training, it feels a little full of ourselves. It feels a little um, show-off-y, right? And when I was a kid, it was, don't be a show-off, you know? And we were a conditioned to be more humble more easily than we were conditioned to accept and love ourselves for the things that we do and who we are. That's an even bigger one. Some of us are okay at loving ourselves for what we do, but how many of us love ourselves just for who we are? 
that's a tough one. Wow. Yeah. And, and I, I believe that, uh, that's what many of us are, are dealing with. This, uh, accepting yourself for who you are, love yourself for who you are mm-hmm. and, and be yourself for who you are, uh, without, um, having to pretend to make others happy because I believe if you, if you can't make yourself, happy, if you're not happy, you're not going to make anybody else happy. And right. it's just, it's just not going to work. Uh, you know, so, uh, uh, you talked a lot about the holiday season, about people dealing with loss and grief. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just, that's a tough topic. Would the concept of reset be helpful for people dealing with uh, grief and loss? Just like you just mentioned, the young lady you chatted with yesterday. Yes. Uh, you know, the one of the biggest problems when people are grieving is everybody is very ready to tell them how they should feel, how they should behave, what they should be experiencing. And grief is a unique experience for each person, even the same person grieving a different loss will grieve differently. There are no shoulds in grief. There are no five stages of grief. That is a big giant misnomer. There were five stages defined by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, the stages that a person went through when they were dying, not that the grievers go through after they're gone. But that's been misunderstood by a lot of people for a long time. But my point is, grievers tend to feel defective very quickly. If they can't feel better soon, you know, as soon as everybody thinks they should, they feel defective if maybe they don't want to get out of bed or they can't find the drive to go on. Or I mean, I have had just in the last month, two widows say to me, I can't think of a good reason to go on. And instead of looking at them and saying, of course you can, you've got children, there are people who love you, you've got value in the world. I look at them and say, I understand completely. I don't blame you. Your whole world was built around a relationship with this person and that person's gone now and you haven't yet had the time or the energy to learn how to live without them. It makes total sense that you feel the way you do. And that allows them room to be who they are and stop judging themselves as doing it wrong or being defective. And from that place, people can begin to heal. So that's more of a reset. It's like, okay, I'd, I'd like to feel better. I'd like to do it differently. I'd like to have more energy, but they aren't feeling like they're defective because they don't. Does that make sense, JC? It makes a whole lot of sense. And, you know, we're going to take a station break, but when when we get back, I want to talk about your book, you know, that deals with uh, grief and the, 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 I wouldn't say necessarily the stages, uh, but you're the expert at it and, I want our viewers to uh, know a little bit about that and know where they can get your book and, and all the, and the assessments that you provide. So we're going to take a station break. But when we come back, we're going to continue our, our great conversation with Paula Shelton. It's your life. I'm Dr. James J.C. Cooley. We'll be back shortly after the break.
Noah Dingley here, producer of The James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. And the new audio version of James' book, Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, is a must-have. James shares his true life story of struggle and success in America. It's both a cautionary tale and a roadmap to achieving the American dream. Get the new audio version of Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, by James Cooley on Amazon.com or wherever audiobooks are sold. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show, and my absolutely fantastic guest here is, uh, I tell you, um, she is uh, sharing things with us that uh, we all experience or we all are going to go through from one stage. We talk about grief, and she is a grief specialist, and she got several uh, books out there. And Paul, I want to talk about a little bit more about your, your books and your writing and how uh, do you go about dealing with uh, uh, patients, your patients that are experiencing these problems? And, and what kind of nuggets can you give our, our, our viewers and our listeners that might be experiencing some of these things or or will be experiencing some of these things mm-hmm. in the future? Oh, boy. What an opportunity, James. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I think probably one of the toughest things for people at the beginning of the year is we are all in this let's start fresh mentality. But if you're somebody who, as several of my clients are, just hung on by your fingernails through the holidays because you were dealing with loss, because someone you love died or you lost your home or your your finances are a disaster, then it's really hard to have the energy and the optimism to go, yeah, it's going to be a great new year. And so what I would encourage you, if you are somebody who is dealing with loss, first of all, remember your energy level is lowered. It's being drained by all the emotional stuff you're dealing with. So try to be gentle with yourself. That's one of the things we discussed with a resolution. If you don't like the way it felt December 25th or 31st, don't think you're going to make a radical change here on June 4th or 5th. I mean, not June, (laughs) January. Just say, you know what? I'm going to try, give yourself a gentle goal. Like I'm going to try to take a walk every day where I've been very sedentary. I'm going to, and by the way, one of my favorite things to do is a gratitude walk. This not only gets the body moving, it takes you to a higher vibrational level energetically. And all you do is you walk down the street and you notice what you can feel grateful for. Oh, the blue sky is incredible today. I'm so grateful for that. There's a new flower on my dragon fruit plant. Oh, I'm so grateful for that. Oh, the grass is being fed by the water from the rain and it's beautiful and green. Those kinds of little things, as silly as it may sound, actually start raising your vibration and you will feel better by the end of the walk. You can do the same kind of thing with a gratitude list because that puts us energetically in touch with things that are of a higher vibration. And that's what we need because grief is a slow, low, dense vibration. And believe me, grief isn't just about someone you love died. Grief is the normal, natural response to loss because loss creates change. And as we were saying earlier, humans have a problem with change because they like the comfort of the familiar. So I guess the first thing I would urge you, if you are dealing with loss, sadness, grief, and by the way, grief can bring up fear, anxiety. Uh, It can make you feel stuck. 
It can bring on, bring on brain fog. Grief has many faces. So remember that if you're going through something and you're going, I don't know why I'm feeling this way. Look deep down inside and you may find you're dealing with loss and grief. Wow. Hey, hey Paul. So a lot of times we, we dealing with loss and grief and, mm -hmm. and many times it's much more than that. It's a part of depression and we don't know it. How can a, someone tell the difference between grieving and a deep stage of uh, depression? Is there a difference? You know, as I said, JC, grief has many faces and depression can be one of them. So I think the delineator would be how long have you been depressed? If you lost someone that you love, like the widow I was talking about earlier, maybe a month ago, two months ago, and you're still depressed, that makes sense. That's very normal. We don't want to start... Um, making things, oh, I can't think of the word right now, but when we make something an illness rather than a normal natural response, that very often happens with grief. But now if you're a year down the road or two years down the road and you're still paralyzed with depression, then, then you definitely need help in dealing with that. And so very often, it is the clients who come to see me the soonest after the loss who progress the most rapidly just because they are processing those feelings as they come up. And that's the key. That's the most important thing to authentically process the feelings you're having. Don't guilt yourself about them. Don't worry you're doing it wrong. Just authentically talk to somebody, beat on pillows, get in the car and scream. I've done that one, believe me. You know, do what you have to do to move it through and move it out. And if you need professional help, there is nothing wrong with that. That can really shortcut the experience of the pain you're going through. Wow. You know, uh, we're coming down to the last few minutes of the show, but uh, we've got the uh, Goldsmith Financial Corporation asking you, can you explain what you meant by raising your vibrations and also is wishing you a happy new year. Oh, how sweet. Yes, we humans are energetic electrical beings. You know, that's how our heart works, that's how our brains work. And it's there is actually an energy field around every one of us. You know, quantum physics taught us that long ago. And but within that field, energy can either be moving in a low, slow, dense vibration or it can be a very high vibration. And we tend to associate a higher vibration with feeling better, having more energy. Wow. And this is one of the reasons, JC, you mentioned my books before. Um, in grief, when will this pain ever end? I don't require that the reader reads every page from one to the end. I, I give you short chapters. I give you articles tools and processes that can help you raise your vibration and move through your grief and not get stuck in it. And my, my first book, Chakras the Magnificent Seven, is all about working with your energy centers to keep them at a higher vibrational level so you can feel better and do what you need to do in life every day. And then the third book was Saying the Right Thing When You Don't Know What to Say, which I wrote because after years of he hearing sad, grieving people say nobody came or nobody talked about it or people just kept telling me what I should do, I thought, okay, I know why that happens. People need a guidebook. They don't know what to say. They don't know how to help. They don't feel adequate. So saying the right thing when you don't know what to say is like a little guidebook. And they're all available on Amazon. And all of them are absolutely fantastic. But Paula, we're down to the last minute of the show. Can can you tell people how they can get in touch with you? Uh, of course, you just told them about uh, your books on Amazon. And mm -hmm. can so about 15 seconds or less, can you explain uh, how they can get, get in touch with you if they want absolutely. to? Absolutely. The easiest thing is just go to paulashaw.com. 
grab the free gift there, which comes from that last book, Saying the Right Thing, when you don't know what to say. Um, and, and you can book that complimentary 20-minute consult with me also right there, paulashaw.com. And if you want to know about the podcast that I do, Change It Up Radio, there's a website for that, changeituprradio.com. You can hear past shows. You can get info about being a guest or a sponsor. It's all there. Paula, I want to thank you so much for taking time. You know you got to stand at a, a seat at the end of my show. Uh, you always will have. You always will. So I want to thank you so much. I'd like to thank uh, my executive producer, Michelle, Dr. Michelle Cooley, for putting together another great show. Uh, most importantly, I'd like to thank my listeners and viewers for taking the time to listen to the James Cooley Show. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. It's your life. <laughs>